What's good everybody and welcome back to Brand Review from Hyperfocus. Today we are going to be talking about the recent update or rebrand from Nokia. In today's video we'll be looking at a history of the brand, we will be looking at who made the brand and an overview of the future of the brand too. And at the end we will be giving our scores in our humble opinion. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and I will hand you directly over to Mr. Jan Stein, who's going to give you a little bit of information about the history of this prestigious brand that is Nokia. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, uh, for this uh, introduction. Yeah, good Pleasure. to be back on a, on a brand review. Uh, and it's I think it's a it's a big one. I think Nokia is well known. I think I mean, everyone who grew up in the in the 90s uh, and in this time when the first, they were not called smartphones back in the days, mobile phones came up, uh, I'm pretty sure. Well, you say, I think anybody who grew up in the 1800s <laughs> will have maybe a connection to that, but we will find out a little bit more about, about that shortly. Yeah, because the history, I think that's what you are uh, referring to, yes, right? Yes. Uh, is that Nokia is founded uh, actually back in uh, 1865, which is quite old, in, in Finland. Um, and uh, they actually started, which came a bit unexpected when we researched it, um, by establishing a pulp mill. You had to explain to me what a pulp mill is. Maybe you can do it for our audience as well. Yeah, so a pulp mill, uh, for <laughs> those who don't know, is um, a factory, I suppose, or a, a, a place where old paper is run through a milling process, through, through, uh, through water to actually break down the the cardboard or uh, paper waste back into something that can then be reused again. I mean, we have here a picture even in uh, 1960, in the 1960s, they're still producing toilet paper. Crazy, okay. If you were around in, uh, in the 90s or early 2000s, you will probably have owned one of these phones. It was huge, game changer. Yeah, and also was like Apple today, right? I mean, that was Nokia was the phone to have. I mean, there were other players. But Motorola, I think, were big as well around about the same time. But yeah, Nokia for sure. And this silhouette was such a classic design back then. And I mean, still is now. You still see a lot of retro heads still using these things. Yeah, and having Snake. I think Snake was exclusively on Nokia phones, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this was also a big thing. Yeah, so they were one of the big uh, mobile phone uh, companies back in the days but then there's somewhat I don't know when the whole smartphone area came up I think they but why look at the innovation look at look at these uh, images of uh, <laughs> of what we had to deal with back in the day I mean they look almost the one in the middle looks like a Game Boy a Game yeah, it Boy was, Color it was, it was a game device yeah the N-Gage ah, right, okay. yeah you could play games with that alright yeah, crazy it was okay, half cool. game device half uh, mobile phone future the future very forward thinking yeah lovely yeah, and today, uh, as we said, uh, kind of uh, they were lost somewhat. They lost the battle when when the whole smart smartphone thing came up, and then now Samsung, Google, Apple, I think they are like the biggest player. Um, so they are no longer designing uh, or selling any products for the consumer market nowadays, but they still exist. Um, as a B two B, right? There's a B two B, and they're providing all the necessary infrastructure for all things network related to service providers, cable operators, uh, web scale providers, large enterprises and governments. Lippincott, yeah, have you heard about them before? I have not heard of them. Yeah, me neither. No. But they're quite big, um, also founded uh, in 1943. Uh, their headquarters in New York, but they have offices all over the world and they really work for the big companies like Walmart, uh, Starbucks, Samsung, Nissan, so all the big players. So it's around 300 employees, so it's this kind of design uh, agency. But, you know, they do all of brand strategy, innovation, technology, all this kind of Full stuff. Service. Full, Full service. Full yeah. service. So let's look at the history then. This was also something I thought was pretty crazy when I think about Nokia. I never think of a fish. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, yeah. In 1871, the first logo has some kind of fish in it. Do you know why? I have no idea. I, d I couldn't find anything. Yeah, I did, I, tr I did research as well, and I could not find fish, Nokia, why? Toilet paper. 
yeah, and I don't know if anybody knows and anyone uh, has uh, the information that we don't, please leave that in the comments below because we'd love to know why there is a fish in the original Nokia logo. And uh, this is the logo, I think, which also was on the toilet paper we showed before. Okay. So, it, yeah, they used it. But yeah, and then it turned, like, as we said, in the, in the mid-late 90s, then it became the iconic Nokia logo everyone is familiar with. I love the 90s. Uh, it's always with the 1960s. Um, they're, the, they're, the fa they're my favorite. They're the best, they're kind of the, the precursor to what we try to do today, I think. Mm -hmm. Somewhat. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, so we have here some uh, two statements. One is from Melissa Schupp, Chief Corporate Affair Officer at Nokia, and she says, um, in terms of uh, the branding, so this is a bold step in Nokia's journey, and it will help us to get recognized by existing and prospective customers for the B2B technology innovation leader we are today. And Stacy. Briarly, Vice President for, of Brand uh, of Nokia said, uh, our new logo is bold, is a bold evolution of the 1960s uh, classic. There we go. It's dynamic, precise, and brings new meaning, cleverly representing our purpose with abstracted letters that, when acting together, read as Nokia. Okay, so let's reveal it, All if right. you not have seen it. Here we go. Um, yesterday, which brings a tear to my eye, uh, and the future, uh, side by side. Nostalgia and, uh, yeah, a forward-thinking um, positioning. Do you see the reference to the 1960s? No, not at all. I mean... Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it used to be like a very straightforward, bold um, word mark. And now, I mean, what they've done, they, um, I mean, you, you can see that on, on at some logos, this kind of um, method, they took away some parts of the, of the, of the typeface, like for the N, for example, and the K, um, but they, they made it so your eye still puts the whole word together. Yeah, so the negative space that your head kind of, or your mind fills in the, in the blanks. I and still don't understand the reason why the vision for that. No, yeah, it's. I mean, it. I I understand it looks a bit more modern now. Like it has a bit more techy feel to it. Mm -hmm. Modern techy kind of feel. But uh, um, I don't. I don't understand it. To be honest, yeah. I can see <coughs> the construct. So. The N and the A and the and the K are all made of the same uh, shape, the same form. So mm. there's there's that, but I don't really get the symbolism uh, behind. But maybe as we start to explore more the yeah. rest of the brand, let's not all let's not put all of um, yeah the the decision making in the logo. The logo is just to kind of fly the flag of what uh, what the brand represents somewhat and it should be the the sum of everything together that completes this uh, this story so let's see what we can find yeah so here we have some key visuals where they um yeah um, added some nice 3d graphics to the logo i think again here is the the idea that you have like this missing parts of the logos and it is here filled with uh, so it feels like the logo is inside of this 3D um, visual and then the whole leaving parts of the logo out also, yeah, kind of makes sense. Is it kind of like seamlessly weaved into technology? Is that what it's trying to say? That's a nice metaphor, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Could, could, it, it could, could be. be a nice story for them to tell. Yeah, we would have been a lot cheaper than <laughs> Lip, Lipton, what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Lippy next, Lippy next time Lippy comes Lippy there you go. Yeah, but overall, I mean, we've seen these kind of 3D uh, CGI images. I mean, like a lot of these bigger consultants, consultancy uh, motherships using this kind of imagery. So we have a like a brand video here, which we have a look at right now.
All right. All right. Nokia are making skateboards. <laughs> it seems. I don't know. Why do we always have to have skateboarders in these uh, these brand videos? What do you think? Why is skateboarders in no, there? No, no. In I general, don't, I don't expect an answer uh, for that. I, 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 it feels for me. I mean, I've seen a lot of these kind of videos, and again, when I, I think when I look into like consulting space, you know, the Accenture's, uh, the uh, Boston consultants of the world, uh, they use this kind of also like this kind of way of putting these videos together. So the logo obviously is the hero of the rebranding. There's nothing else. Yeah. It's the logo and it's the shapes which are uh, created out of this logo and they also use this inside the video here. And but I mean, they could not tell this, this story um, with the old logo. You could not, no. this, what I said before, this interweaving um, of the brand through different uh, places, technology, environments. It does that actually quite well, to be honest. Yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, we have another short video here. Networks are evolving from connectors of humanity and technology into something far more powerful. When networks meet cloud, they become amplifiers, bringing everything to life with intelligence, fueling innovation, inspiring collaboration, enhancing sustainability, unlocking new ways of working that are reshaping the way we all live. Harness the exponential potential of networks. Transform your business to the power of N. Hmm. The power of N. The power of N. Mm, exciting. All right. You had a look at the website? Yeah. Um, there's a, yeah, I mean, the, the website's just a breakdown of everything that you have uh, seen already. It's snippets of the video, this new kind of look and kind of skull building something for the moon, which is quite interesting. Um, and lots of uh, robots, robot frogs, and other types of things. It's it's a very simple, basic um, kind of upgrade to to the website. I won't go too deeply into it, but generally, it's quite clean. It's not offensive. Um, these big companies often struggle with this, so I think the execution is actually not too bad. Okay, and uh, next we have here are some images from. One of them is actually from the from the website, but I think it's also plays a huge role in the direction of where they're going. Yeah. Again, everything tech future. Okay, and then there is something else. Um, yeah, so Nokia Pure is a new design system that has been created to produce consistent and flexible and future-proof uh, digital products. Um, yeah, the system is made up of foundational elements, components, templates and guidelines, all of which uh, facilitate in producing a fresh, clean and minimal new style for Nokia digital products in line with their new brand look and feel. Well, we, we're now actually going to head on over to the score. So I was going to give like a little bit of feedback on this. I will uh, include that in my in my score. So I'll go first mm -hmm. then. Um, I think uh, you like the design system. I'm not a huge fan, to be honest, um, and the reason is it's a little too late. Um, companies have been doing this now for the last five years or so, um, putting design systems together, so I don't see this as anything radical, and they do make a bit more of a big deal of it with this video. Um, again, it's cool, it aligns the, the company, so there is that forward-thinking nature of it, but from what I see, it doesn't really spark any forward thinking vision. It actually looks a bit old school, to be honest, like from the illustrations to the graphics, there's nothing really that wows me. Um, and this is what I'm supposed to be getting when I look at this vision of the future and I see this 3D world, this um, new take on the logo, it's really looking way beyond where they are today. And this design system doesn't really do that for me. Um, I think also some of the imagery a bit, is a bit cliche and a bit like kind of forced. I think they could have gone about it in a different way. One thing that I would like to say is testament to whoever um, went through the rounds and rounds of meetings with the, with the board at Nokia to actually get them to change the logo because I think that will have been 
a huge deal for such a big organization to actually go through that. So kudos to that. I think that's where my respect lays in such a big company making such a big, bold move. Do I like the execution? Not convinced. But I really, really appreciate uh, the dedication to trying to align their thoughts, their vision, their strategy, and their design language with something that is more coherent with um, how brands should express themselves today. So I'm going to land somewhere in the middle. I'm going to give it a seven um, because of effort and forward thinking. And they're going to lose a little bit of the points on the aesthetic because it's um, it doesn't really say what it promises. And I also feel the logo is a little bit, um, yes, a seven. A seven. Um, okay. I so I think the last time when I checked out Nokia, I think it might be quite some time uh, ago, but I think the brand looked very, I mean, it was just like the Nokia brand I remembered from the, from the 90s, just without any products. So it looked very boring. And I think from this, it's actually a huge step they, they took. And uh, I think the brand now looks much more, it's just um, more um, yeah, bolder, braver and uh, vibrant. Yeah, there's much more going on. But I also agree that the execution, for, it, it, I just feel it's a bit generic, everything. I've seen that all so too often now, these 3D um, visuals, um, these really um, nice poppy photography. But again, it's not super distinctive. I think the most dis distinctive elements, there are two things. It's the color blue, which they still use. But blue in general, in a B2B context, it's a lot of blue out there. Um, I think it's the number one <laughs> color in, in B2B business anyway. Um, and the logo. And then maybe I think the new logo is even too deconstructed. And some people might have uh, a problem with reading this and yeah, so I'm not sure if, if if I would have chosen the logo as being the distinctive element, which play is the centerpiece of my my new branding. Um, so, long story short, I'll give it a six. Okay, all right, cool. Um, yeah, very different um, opinions. The, the scores kind of landed very close to each other, but from different perspectives. So I think it's a really interesting brand um, to look at. I'm excited excited to see where they they go. Um, they should yeah, have so brought that, the fish back. Yeah. <laughs> and started making toilet paper again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that just about wraps it up. Uh, thanks for tuning in and watching us waffle on uh, a little bit more extensive today. Uh, obviously, it's a brand that is, uh, has history and probably at some point was very close to our hearts. So there's still that kind of attachment there. Um, yeah, if you haven't, don't forget to uh, subscribe so you can continue to... Uh, be notified when we release new videos and you can see everything that we're up to here at the studio. Um, if you haven't also uh, liked the video, it helps us continue to grow this channel and we will see you in the next one. Peace. Peace, bye.